We're the Fall One Frogs. We run, we win. This is James. God and booze, Jesus and alcohol. We are going to have a short three video series on this subject because it needs to be addressed appropriately. And this will probably make both sides that were not on the middle of the road upset. But we have to address this. So let's start with technically, there is nothing wrong with drinking alcohol. You need scripture, first of all, to substantiate any Christian doctrine. If you can't build your sermon or opinion on multiple verses, at least four, you don't have a doctrine. You really just have your personal opinion. Even Paul said, but I speak this by permission and not a commandment in 2 Corinthians 7, 6. He actually let the people know in that particular chapter when he was getting doctrine from the Lord or if he was just giving his informed opinion because he was Paul the aged. So it's not a problem to have an opinion, but if you're going from the pulpit, you need to be like Paul. You need to specifically state whether or not you're giving your opinion or you're giving a doctrine. So as far as the doctrine of alcohol, you have to have scripture. With anything, you have to have enough scripture to create a doctrine. And four scriptures minimum for a doctrine, a doctrine, like the doctrine of baptisms, the doctrine of, you know, it's written in the Bible, the doctrine of baptisms, the doctrines of repentance from dead works, the doctrine of resurrection, the doctrine of, you know, how God forgives when you ask him to forgive you, the doctrine of healing, the doctrine of prosperity. Doctrine is something that has multiple scriptures that you can stand off. So you have to have a doctrine first. You have to have scriptures create a doctrine. So therefore, we want to give you the doctrine of alcohol as found in the Bible. Drinking is very serious. Even though there's technically nothing wrong with drinking alcohol, drinking, drinking is very serious. Two of Aaron's sons died because they were drunk in the tabernacle. Leviticus chapter 10. We're talking about priests of the Most High God tossing it up and then walked in the tra tabernacle and offered strange fire. It says, And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went fire out from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord and the, and the Lord spake unto Aaron saying do not drink wine nor strong drink thou nor thy sons with thee when thou when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation lest ye die it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and that ye may put difference between holy and holy holy and unholy and between clean and unclean so he said when they go into the tabernacle, they can't drink strong wine. He didn't say they couldn't do it at all. But those children of God died because they were drunk in the tabernacle. Priests of the Most High God in church drinking alcohol. So basically, and they died. So alcohol in and of itself is not an issue by itself. If you think about it as just alcohol, strong drink, because God didn't tell them they couldn't drink it forever. So let's see, even Jesus himself said, Not that which goeth unto a man defileth him, but that which cometh out, this defileth the man. He even referred to of, you know, I won't drink this wine with you until I drink it new with you in the kingdom. He so and Jesus is talking about wine. So even in a prophecy that's given by the prophet Jotham, when the men of Shechem went to make Abimelech king, you know. It speaks favorably about wine. It says, Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou, and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Speaks favorably about wine. Number six speaks of the law of the Nazarite. When a man abstains from wine and strong drink for a time to consecrate himself to the Lord. He doesn't cut his hair either during that time. However, if the children of Israel weren't permitted to drink wine, then that entire chapter is pointless. Why well, have a law of a Nazarite not to drink anything from the vine if they weren't supposed to drink from the vine anyway? So that means that you have to know that there, that what's going on. The Bible does allow people to drink alcohol, does allow them to drink wine, but like we say, you have to have a full doctrine on it. So continuing... Um, Romans 13, 13, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. So there's good things talking about wine, and this verse talks about bad things that deal with getting drunk and, you know, strong wine drink, people getting drunk and stuff like that. So there's good and bad to this subject. We do have to discuss both, and we have to give you scripture on both because there is no scripture that says thou shalt not drink wine. But it does, of course, mention 
not in rioting and drunkenness. So ultimately, since God is a personal God and he deals with us individually and directly, you best use Proverbs 3, 6, and in all thy ways acknowledge him and he'll direct thy paths. You won't be able to stand before Jesus in heaven and point the finger at me or anybody if all you wanted to do was get drunk or get a buzz and then cloak that evil desire in a few random scriptures. So you have to go to the Word of God. You have to go to the Bible. You have to go to the Spirit of God. So we're going to begin now with four things to consider before you take that first sip of bubbly or open your mouth for or against it. Next video. Live movie.